What we are looking at here is a 1970 Hot Wheels Redline Jack Rabbit Special. I don't recall where I picked up this casting. I believe it was given to me by a co-worker. But unfortunately, I'm not really that fond of it. Apparently, I'm not the only one. This casting was only released in 1970. But nonetheless, it does have a few interesting facts. Apparently, back in the day, there was a Hot Wheels animation series, and this car was featured in that series. Also, the year it was released in 1970, there was a promotional series ran by Jack in the Box. It included a Jack in the Box header card as well as a sticker pack. It's also believed that this car was based off the 1962 Ford Mustang 1 prototype, although this cannot be verified. And like all red lines, there was a U.S. version as well as a Hong Kong version offered. Now the U.S. version had a painted stripe, the Hong Kong had a sticker, offered black or white interiors. The U.S. version was available with clear, blue, or smoke glass. Hong Kong was blue only. And in 1973, there would be yet another single year release of this particular casting, under the name Sandwich. And our example here is not in horrible shape. It appears that at one time somebody did paint it red and then wiped it off. The glass is actually in bad shape. Quite a bit of red paint that looks like it was rubbed off or attempted to be rubbed off at some point. And as you can see, it is also missing the stripes. Now this is a US version, so those would have been painted on. But the wheels and base are in great shape. So let's begin. Now unfortunately some of the footage of this video was filmed when I was having a problem with one of my SD cards. So we ground off the post, but we did not get that footage. I released a video earlier this week showing the process. We simply pry the car apart and now we can take out all the pieces. Now this car looks very basic, but essentially it's the same as any other car. There's an interior, an engine, and some glass. Now we'll take a look at the remnants of the red paint. There's a little inside the body. There is that lovely looking windshield. And it actually just attaches to the interior. There's two posts on the rear. They just snap in place. The interior is in great shape. No red paint there. We certainly can't say the same thing for the glass. Lots of red paint. Or it could be blood. I sure hope not. And the base is actually in excellent shape. There's no pitting and the wheels. They look almost brand new. So new, in fact, I contemplated stripping the car for its wheels. This has a single post. We're going to go ahead and drill that out and then file it flat. So our base sits flush with that post. Because in this video, we're going to use a reproduction rivet. Right now, we're just test fitting it with a set of needle nose pliers. And the 16th inch drill bit provides a very snug fit you almost don't need any glue. As you can see, I need to pry it back apart just to get the rivet out. Next, we will use our citrus strip gel to strip the paint. This produces no harmful odors, and it's more safe for the environment. That body is almost in pristine condition. We do have a slight bend at the top, so we just tap it out lightly with our hammer. There are a few burrs in the back. We're gonna lightly file those down. Too bad this is not a custom. This car would look great with Spectra Flame. The body's almost perfect. Now it's time to clean the body with some mineral spirits and then warm soapy water. Ready for paint. This is a tester's enamel and we mix it one to one with some lacquer thinner. Get it to a milky substance and you're ready to shoot. The first coat, we coat the inside and the bottom and it's a light coat. Typically, I use three light coats and one heavy coat, or a wet coat, such as you see here. Now it's time to recreate those stripes. We're just using some model-style masking tape, and we're going to mask off the entire car aside from the center. Now the stripes are only present on the top of the trunk and the front of the car. There's no stripe on the bar or the back of the trunk. Now we're using our little Badger paint mixer here. I've used this in videos a couple years ago. This is new paint and it's thick. Makes speedy work of mixing it up. Three coats of the blue. 
Now we can peel off that masking tape. And the color actually turned out fairly close. I just picked something that looked like the picture. Now we need to address that windshield. So we're going to try some brake fluid WD-40, some high performance brake fluid, and then last some brake cleaner. Now in the past I've had several subscribers recommend brake fluid for cleaning these windshields. So it was time I gave it a try. Put a little bit on a towel and then we rub it in. Now I've heard that you need to let it soak, but I did not feel comfortable letting the glass soak in there. Subscribers have also recommended the WD-40, so we wanted to try that. I think it works about the same as the brake fluid. Maybe not quite as good, but it definitely is removing paint. Next is the high performance brake fluid. I used to use this in one of my cars when I autocrossed, and it does not take anything off. It was horrible. I ended up trying this for about five minutes and it didn't do anything. Didn't mar up the glass. You can see there was a little bit, but not much. And last is the brake cleaner. Now I think this may have worked the best, but the plastic felt like it was getting a little soft, so I stopped and finished it up actually with the WD-40 and a Q-tip because there was paint almost everywhere. It's still far from perfect and it actually looks pretty horrible in person. Next we're going to use some Future Shine. You can also use Clear Coat. It's about the same thing and let it dry. And really it didn't help anything. It just made it a shiny mess. But I've had great results with this in the past, just not on this one. Now we need to straighten out those wheels. They are bent, so we're using this little tool from Bright Vision that allows you to bend the wheels back in place. Essentially, you just need to bend them in the opposite direction. They're bent. Now that that's corrected, it actually rolls and it looks 100% better. Next, we will reassemble. We're going to start by attaching the glass to the interior. And those are just installed as one piece into the body of the car. It actually goes around the post. Next, we will set the engine into the base. It simply sits in place and then there's a post on the interior that it attaches to. Then we mate the two together, trying to avoid getting the soapbox derby paint on the car. We're going to apply a little bit of CA to a toothpick as well as the rivet and then push that into place. Now it may take a little bit of force depending on how tight the hole is. That's what she said. I end up painting the taillights off camera because I actually forgot about them until I looked at the pictures. And these were taken from the online red line guide. This is how I matched up the color of the blue. And I think it turned out fairly close. And I also used these photos to find out there was no stripe on the rear of the trunk. And this is when we discovered it had painted taillights as well. Now it's all complete. And it's far from perfect. But Hot Wheels were never perfect when new. And I'm really happy with the paint. I'm just not happy with the windshield. If I had it to do over again, I would probably leave the windshield alone. Leave all that red paint on there. Give the car a little bit more character. And originally, I was going to make this November's Patreon giveaway car. But I'm so unhappy with that windshield, I would never feel happy sending this out to somebody. So I'll have to come up with something else for that. Speaking of Patreon, I'd like to thank my top patrons, which are Corbin Toll and Gary Burke. And if you would like to be part of the monthly custom giveaway, be sure to check out the channel on Patreon. I've got the links located in the description. Also, if you see any tools in this video that you'd like to purchase for yourself, I have Amazon affiliate links in the description below the video of every single tool that we use. If you are looking for the Future Shine, which is made by Pledge, they've actually discontinued that product, and I believe the new product is called Revive It. And you should be able to get that just about anywhere. If you've forgotten, this is what the car looked like originally. We had great wheels, great base, kind of a red wash paint, we'll call it, and a cruddy windshield. Now it still has a great base, great wheels. I believe it has great paint, but it still has a cruddy windshield. So in the end, we really didn't do a whole lot, but the restoration was a lot of fun, and I learned something. I wanted to try brake fluid as a cleaner, and I got to try it, as well as WD-40 and a few other products. So for me, it was well worth it, and that's what this is all about. Learning and sharing with others. 
If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. Also hit that bell. That way you're notified every time we release a new video. Also follow the channel on Instagram. I typically post some sneak peek pics of projects that are coming up. And as always, thanks for watching.